This video is an introduction to procedural meshes, how the data is set up, as well as some more advanced operations you can easily do with the MeshOps plugin, available in the Unreal Marketplace. Procedural meshes are essentially static meshes that can be modified at runtime. The first thing you want to do is add a procedural mesh to the blueprint. Now let's make it the root. And we can't simply create a mesh section out of nothing. It will error out, as you'll see in a second. Because it needs the vertices and triangles arrays at minimum. Okay, now I'm going to make an array. Give it three elements for the three vertices of a triangle. Since we only need one triangle for this demonstration. Now every element in the triangles array corresponds to indexes in the vertices array. So I'm going to set these as 0, 1, and 2 to correspond with 0, 1, and 2 from the vertices array. Now let's compile. And as you can see, nothing shows up. So let's click on the procedural mesh. And you'll see that a triangle does appear. It's simply upside down. Unreal by default hides back faces, so you won't be able to see it unless you're looking at the other side of it. So let's flip this triangle. In order to do that, we just flip the last two indexes in the triangle. And let's recompile. Now if I view it from above, it's the correct orientation. Now let's give this mesh some UVs. A simple way to do planar projection with UVs is to take the vertices and normalize them. So anywhere there's 50, I'll put a 1. And we'll leave out the Z coordinate. And as you can see, there's no stretching. Now let's give it a material to see. And normals generally point in the direction that the triangle is facing. So let's set these all to 1 and we shouldn't notice a difference because that's the way the triangle is facing. Now if we set these to negative 1, we'll see a difference in the lighting. So let's change these back. Now we can give this some vertex colors as well. Each of these arrays correspond directly with the vertices array. In essence, each of these properties are stored within the vertexes. And I have a material here that can visualize vertex colors. Now let's change one of these to purple. And as you can see, it changed on the mesh. A lot of these UV channels and tangents are optional. Now let's move on to some of the more advanced operations you can do easily with MeshOps. This section of the tutorial is exclusive to MeshOps, a plugin on the Unreal Marketplace. However, some of the nodes are merely recreations of default Unreal nodes, such as Create Mesh Section and Slice Procedural Mesh. Let's start by generating a simple disk. This generates a flat circle composed of triangles with any number of points along its edge. And then snap them into the Create Mesh node. As you can see, this can generate a disk out of any number of points. Now 
Now we don't strictly need to use Unreal's create mesh section. Instead, we can use mesh ops procedural mesh from mesh data. That way, we can hook it up directly. We won't have to worry about the arrays. Now I've rearranged the nodes so I have a little bit more space. So we're going to extrude this mesh now to give it a little bit more depth. And let's keep this border separate, just append it to the data. And create a variable for the distance. And I can change this value to be whatever I want. Now let's do some mesh slicing. First we'll create a plane mesh and use its position and rotation as the virtual plane for the slice mesh node. And we'll scale this up so it's more visible. Let's get the position and up vector from the plane, which we'll be using to slice the mesh. Now you may be familiar with Unreal's slice mesh, slice procedural mesh node. MeshOps provides its own version of this to work with mesh data. All right, I need to append the gaps. And we can use the plane we created earlier to control the axis of the slice. And as you can see, every step along the way is still live. Any edits I make here contributes to the final result, no matter the order it was in. Now let's create the other half. I simply create a new variable and attach it to the output. Then I make a copy of these nodes for the other half. Then I'm going to set the section index for both of these to 1 and change the material as well. Well first we need to create the other half and now it shows up as intended. Now let's move this other half up a little ways to be able to see in between. going to use the transform mesh data node and set the transform location to 50. As you can see this moved it up even though it's below right now. You just remove the rotation from the plane. And as you can see every step still completes no matter how many steps are in the process. And finally let's add a boolean here. So I'm going to take data and let's make a new mesh data out of a static mesh. And then assign it to its own variable. Mesh booleans will likely be covered more in depth in the future. But the basic principle is that it either joins or cuts away a mesh from another mesh. And let's create a cube to represent its transform. And then we'll overwrite data with the result. And as you can see, this gives the intersection of the two meshes. Now I'm going to try it with difference in a different mesh. 
Most operations in mesh shops, including the booleans, can run extremely fast. All of this has been done in the construction script, and every time I drag it recompiles. I hope you've learned a little bit more about procedural meshes and their use in Unreal. Thank you for watching.